Today, I'm going to talk about NR2 and bioallelic FH inactivation. But first, I would like to acknowledge the funding agency. The work I'm going to talk about is funded by the National Cancer Institute. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my former graduate student, Dr. Michael Karen, and my current graduate student, Baris Karen Magu, who have done most of the work here. I'm a member of the University of Arizona Cancer Center and we have extensively made use of the core facility supported by the grant. And I'd like to thank my collaborator, Dr. Everett Stone in UT Austin, who provided the systemase uh, for our study. Dr. Stone is a co-founder of Eglia Biopharmaceutics and Kin Therapeutics. Hereditary leiomyomatosis and renal cell cancer, abbreviated HLRCC, is an autosomal dominant hereditary cancer syndrome with incomplete penetrance. Afflicted individuals have the uh, high probability of developing uterine fibroids, cutaneous leiomyoma, and papillary renal cell carcinoma. Now, the, uh, the uterine fibroid and cutaneous leiomyoma are benign, but uh, the cutaneous leiomyoma can sometimes be uh, disfiguring and also painful, so it's also contributing to the degradations of quality of life. Uh, importantly, HRCC patient uh, has a high probability of developing aggressive papillary renal cell carcinoma. And this is a very aggressive form of kidney cancer. And they're usually very small tumor, as you can see over here, and they already invaded into the aorta. So um, this make it surgi make surgical resection very difficult and also uh, this tumor is notoriously resistant to all kinds of therapies uh, that have been tested so far. Radiotherapy, targeted therapy, chemotherapy, all do not seem to work on this tumor. So there is an urgent need to look for a treatment strategy for this particular tumor type. Now, HRRCC is caused by a germline mutation to one of the FH allele. A one loss of a, a loss of heterozygosity at the uh, at the disease tissues, this cause fumarate to accumulate in the cell. Now, oftentimes fumarate can accumulate to very high level. Uh, it has been measured to be greater than one millimolar, and at this concentration, fumarate can covalently modify many proteins, uh, cysteine residues on the protein in a type of post-translational modification known as succination. One such protein is KEEP1. In 2011, I shown that covalently modified, uh, KEEP1 can be covalently modified by fumarate, forming these two succinyl cysteine residues. Now, KEEP1 is a negative regulator of a transcription factor known as an RF2. And because the modified KIP1 cannot repress NRF2 as a result, NRF2 get accumulated in the cell and can go into the nucleus and carry out its transcriptional function. Now, when NRF2 is activated, it promotes a lot of genes involved in antioxidants response, cellular ion homeostasis, and various other functions. We have also shown that Sustained NRF2 activation feature is also a common uh, phenotype seen in sporadic, papillary, uh, sporadic aggressive papillary renal cell carcinoma. So being shown over here, uh, HRRCC associated papillary renal cell cancer uh, denoted as hereditary BRCC2 and their aggressive sporadic papillary renal cell carcinoma denoted as non-hereditary BRCC2. As you can show, as you can, as you can see, these are AKRM, B10, and NQ1 staining, two NRF2 target genes, and you can see that they have high expression in all these tissues, even though FH mutations are rarely found in sporadic tumor. We have done study and found that somatic NRF2 gain of function mutation and somatic loss of function mutations to various negative regulator NRF2 can contribute to this sustained NRF2 activation. Now, because FH mutation and also mutations that drive NRF2 activation 
seems to be uh, a common feature between sporadic and hereditary aggressive papillary renal cell carcinoma. We have been focusing on trying to figure out what NRF2, what is the role of NRF2 in this particular tumor type. One avenue to look at this is actually to look at um, cellular ion homeostasis because both ferritin heavy and ferritin light chain are direct target of NRF2. So when NRF2 is activated, transcript, transcript level of FDL and FDH or ferritin light of, and ferritin heavy are elevated in the cells. But usually the, tra the translations of these transcripts are repressed by IRP2. So in HRRCC cell, we found that because of the NRF2 activation, the transcript level is very high. At the same time, IRP2 or iron regulatory protein 2 is, succin is also succinated and render rendered this IRP2 cannot repre re repress the translation. And as a result, you have accumulations of ferritin particle in these cells. And importantly, when we knock down ferritin, either ferritin light or heavy chain, this will lead to uh, growth retardation and prolonged knockdown of ferritin actually lead to cell death. We have also done machine learning, uh, using machine learning on large data set to try and figure out what this particular tumor, tumor type could be sensitive to. And we found that FH mutation actually enhanced sensitivity to ferroptosis, which is a form of iron dependent cell death. Now, using HRRCC cell line, UOK262, we have created a HRRCC FH rescue isogenic cell line. So as you can see, when you put fumarate hydrotase back into this cell line, NRF2 level decrease. So this is a flag NRF2 ectopic, uh, flag FH ectopic expression of fumarate hydrotase itself. Now, if you look at irasin, which is a ferritosis inducer, the rescue cell become more resistant to the erastin, and glutamate is another um, ferroptosis inducer. You can see that the rescue cell becomes significantly more resistant to uh, glutamate induced uh, ferroptosis. Now, because ferroptosis is an iron dependent cell there, we can use iron chelator to inhibit this, this process. So, so with defaroxamine or DFO, we can totally inhibit the ferroptosis cell death in, induced by erastin. Now, FH mutation, because FH mutation uh, lead to high ferritin level in the cell, we, kind of, we can kind of see how this thing can occur. Like cell, this, this HRCC cell actually have very high ferritin level. So, if you look at how ferroptosis occur, ferroptosis is a process whereby lipid peroxide accumulate in the cell to such high level that it kills the cell. So the cell has polyunsaturated fatty acid and the cell has also has labor ion pool. And because of phantom reactions catalyzed by the labor, labor ion pool, polyunsaturated acid are being converted to lipid peroxide. But under normal condition, GPX4 which is glutathione peroxidase 4 can neutralize the lipid peroxide and therefore the cell will survive without undergoing ferroptosis. Now, it is also important to note that GPX4 require glutathione for its enzymatic function. So compound like erastin and glutamate actually inhibit GP, uh, uh, glutathione synthesis by inhibiting cysteine uptake. And therefore, glutathione get depleted and GPX4 fail to function and lead to ferroptosis. Now, FH mutation lead to accumulations of fumarate and much of those fumarate, fumarate has been reported to actually uh, sequester glutathione, but the cell just don't spontaneously die of ferroptosis because the cell also have high ferritin lab level. Now this high ferritin level actually sequester iron very much like uh, iron chelator does and therefore inhibiting ferroptosis in the process. We also know that a process known as ferritinophagy, a form of autophagy, can degrade ferritin and release the iron and increase labor iron pool. So this gives us actually a translational uh, avenue for our biological finding. 
So we are trying to figure out how to induce ferroptosis uh, in vivo. One of the way that we can do that is actually use, using a synthetic enzyme developed by my collaborator, Dr. Everett Stone from Aglia Biotherapeutics, known as cystinase. Now cystinase is a synthetic enzyme uh, that degrades circulatory cysteine and cysteine and therefore depriving cell of cysteine and cysteine. Uh, this enzyme is currently uh, under clinical trial for cystinuria. So using two different HRCC cell lines, as you can see over here, this UOK262 and NCCFH01, two different HRCC cell lines, which shows that these, both of these cell lines are very sensitive to um, cystinase treatment. So the top row over here, you can see is treated with cystinase. As a control, we, in, we heat inactivated the cystinase and use it in the bottom row over here. So as you can see, uh, under the, the cystinase alone, it kills the cells. Whereas if you put chelate iron using deferoxamine, it rescues the cell, indicating this is a ferroptotic cell, ferropt cell death. There's also another way by using a ferroptosis inhibitor known as ferrostatin, we can inhibit ferroptosis. So indicating this is ferroptosis in both cell lines. Uh, so cystinase induced ferroptosis in both cell lines. Another way to actually me measure the process of ferroptosis is actually by looking at lipid peroxide accumulation. Using BODP, uh, C11 BODP, we can measure uh, lipid peroxide peroxidation in the cells. As you can see over here, this is the control cells, this is flow cytometry analysis. With cystinase, you can see uh, there are significantly more cells that undergo uh, accumulate lipid peroxide. Whereas cystinase with DFO treatment or heat inactivated cystinase alone or heat inactivated cystinase with DFO do not have such effect. And this is true for both cell lines. So another way, as I mentioned earlier, ferritinophagy can release iron from ferritin and therefore increase labile iron pool so we can potentially use um, autophagy inducer like rapamycin to enhance ferroptosis. Uh, it's important to note that rapamycin has been used to treat non-clear cell kidney cancer, in, including aggressive papillary renal cell carcinoma as well. And rapamycin was used to being used to treat advanced clear cell as well. So uh, we try to use this so we can hopefully fast track, uh, if we get good result, fast track this in the clinical trial. So um, this is, the scale of this make this difficult to, look, to, to uh, see, the re see the effect, but essentially the take home message over here is when you combine rapamycin and cysteine deprivation, which you can induce using cystinase, you can significantly more you can see significantly more cells undergo lip, uh, lipid peroxidation accumulation. So this is true for both UOK262 and NCCFH1. So we went on and do in vivo study, uh, and this is in vivo study using NCCFH1 rapamycin treatment alone. You can see that it has no effects on the cell growth at all. The black color line over here uh, represent the control group. The blue color line is the rapamycin treated group. The dotted line over here indicate the day when rapamycin treatment started. Okay, so this is cystinase. So again, the black is the control group. The red is the cystinase treatment group and the dotted line represent the day where cystinase treatment started. And you can see the combination show a tumor static effect. Again, the black represent the control group and then the purple line represent the combination group, the rapamycin cystinase treatment combination group. And the dotted line over here represent the treatment start date. As you can see, the the moment the treatment started, the growth become flatline, so uh, you can get a tumor static effect. So uh, going forward, we hope to find a better way to induce peritinophagy 
either through redox, act, redox active ion chelator. So that's one of the way that we are looking uh, to test to how to test and figure out a way to better induce peritinophagy uh, without using rapamycin. Uh, we are also working on developing immunocompetent syngenic model because uh, ferroptosis is an immune stimulating cell death, unlike, uh, unlike uh, apoptosis. Ferroptosis has a secondary effect, which is after the cell death, it actually triggers an immune response. So using an immune com competent syngenic model, we can potentially do combination therapy with immune checkpoint therapy to see if we can get a secondary immune response and lead to a better response to our ferroptosis inducing uh, treatment. And we are also working on systematic screen to identify NRF2 target genes that are important for tumorigenesis in HLRCC. Uh, with that, I would end here. Thank you.